Okay, well, let me get to the slides then. This is the part I can put on the internet. AdamantBeliever.com forward slash don't take the hate three. And a lot of things like what I just got through preaching, I will only preach in here anyway. So it ain't even about the internet. I just feel like there needs to, a person that's representing the kingdom of God, there needs to be a balance. Yeah. Amen. Amen. So I'm not trying to look, I'm not looking for, to be pushed into a political platform or pushed here or I'm the guy known for the political politics. I want to teach the word of God. So I may say something about this other stuff, but the bottom line is, I want you to get saved. That's the only reason I'm up here talking about it. Because if you get saved, they won't be able to take advantage of you and make you feel bad about your own existence. So look at somebody and say, don't take the hate. They want you to hate yourself. Hate your parents. Hate what happened to you. Hate the decisions they made. Hate their existence. Hate the way they are. Because if they can get you to hate yourself, you'll hate others. And if they can get you to hate yourself, you can't love God. So loving yourself versus lover of self. Amen. Because, you know, they started the whole self-love thing. And remember that? Ayanna Van Zandt and Oprah Winfrey and all of them. You remember? You know, they, they go in churches preaching that. The love to, you know, love yourself and celebrate yourself. T.D. Jakes, celebrate yourself. Lady, her lover, and her lord. Yeah, just fill the bathtub up and bubble bath and play his music with his voice and talking over the song oh. <laughs> yeah light some candles and listen to satin sheet slide the bishop song that's, that's the bishop song Yep, that's, that's what you do. But that's self-love. Amen. And you know, you can only celebrate yourself so much, you're going to get sick of yourself. Because it ain't the same. <laughs> ain't the same. You'll see folk walk around Disneyland by themselves. Oh! <laughs> what am I going to do next? <laughs> right, that's going to get old real quick. Small world gonna get smaller and smaller. <laughs> you gonna start getting mad and have an episode in small world. So <laughs> we're not into self-love, amen. But there is supposed to be a love for ourselves, and I'm gonna describe it in here so you'll know and you won't go too far. Amen. All right, that's what the preach word is for. I love this. I love myself the way what? God loves me. That says it all. I could end the message on that, but I won't. There is nothing wrong with loving the you that God intends for you to be. Loving ourselves should be our goal because if we live to please God, we will love who we are becoming. Isn't that plain and simple? If you live to please God, you'll love who you're becoming. You start hating who you're becoming when you live to please yourself. Because the more things you do to please yourself and the more people you hurt in the process, the less you will like yourself. Folks aren't just turning to weed and alcohol and cigarettes and drugs and stuff just because it feels good. You can feel good eating a sweet potato pie, a pecan pie, some good old coffee on the side, Pass a, just the, the, the strong coffee. It gotta be strong so I can take the pie slice and dunk it in there. 
and the coffee won't get weak. Coffee say, mm, I can handle that. That makes me feel good. I feel great. Pay for it later. But in the, in the, in the moment, it, it feels great. Yeah. But you have to do it God's way because if you begin to celebrate yourself or get self-oriented or practice self-love without God, then you're going to end up in sin. Amen. Proverbs 19 and 8. He that getteth wisdom loveth his what? Ooh-wee. He that getteth what? Wisdom. wisdom. It's so important to get wisdom. Not knowledge. Seeking knowledge. Wisdom. Wisdom. There is a difference. You can go read all the books you want to read. But if you can't, if you don't learn how to apply that and function with real people, then you're going to make a whole bunch of enemies with your knowledge. So he that getteth wisdom loveth his own soul. He that keepeth understanding shall find what? Good, according to the Bible. In the Bible, there is a natural love of oneself that is a part of God's commandment. Our own bodies have natural defenses. Oh, our bodies have what? Natural defenses to keep us what? You mean your body can handle the stuff that's out there? Have you had the flu? Could your body handle it? Ten years ago, Lysol was handling coronavirus. <laughs> Nobody was scared of it ten years ago. It was on all the, 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 the cleaning products. Yeah, folks treated it like anything else. Oh, is that corona? <laughs> okay, it's gone now. But our bodies have natural defenses to keep us alive, which proves that we should what? Love and what? And what? Care for God's creation just as who does? He does. Matthew 22 and 39. And the second is like unto it that thou shalt love thy neighbor as what? The Bible just spoke up and told you, you love your neighbor as you love yourself. So loving yourself is not a sin. Because the Bible says, as long as you love your neighbor like that, you're good. Truly loving oneself can only come from loving God because what? When we deny ourselves and follow him, we are honoring him with ourself and presenting a loving creation to him. So loving yourself can only come from loving God. That's the problem. People try to love themselves without truly loving God. Then you become a self-worshipper. Self-centered. Arrogant. About yourself. Selfish. And you're not thinking about anyone else when you make the decisions that you make. And you become a hurting person that hurts people. Because hurting people hurt people. Romans 12 and 1. I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice. Holy and what? Acceptable unto God, which is what? Your reasonable service. Amen. Self-hatred always comes from sinning against ourselves and the intent for our being. So when you get put on a path against what God intended for you, you're going to end up hating yourself. TV and the internet wants to make you think people are happy with themselves. But at the end of the day, these same folks are using substances. They're abusing substances. They hate themselves because they can't control their own destinies. 
I know folks, I talk to a lot of professional athletes, a lot of folks in the music industry, entertainment, celebrities, you name it. And at the end of the day, I mean, dude, you can't even go get your money out the bank. That's not a good feeling. Like, your money isn't even real. Y'all didn't know that? A lot of them, they just, especially the music folks, they, the, the, the record company gives them cars and how, what you want? You want a house? Okay, we'll get you a house. I can't go buy a house. No, we'll get you one. Where you want it? How do you want it? I think I'll go buy a car. Okay, we'll get you one. I can't go buy my car. No, you can't. Y'all, they, they show you that in movies. And it's really like that. I was like, oh, bro, you gave up your everything and can't go get your money? No deal. No deal. Yeah, it's all virtual. They're, they're not happy. That's why they have to stay around people so people can love on them and I love you and then they come on the internet, I love all y'all. How can you love them? How can you love fans? How can you love humans that you don't know? Why don't you go on and say it like, like you really mean it, like, like what it really is. I love the fact that y'all love me. I love the fact that y'all think I'm better than y'all. Ooh, I just, well, I preach the truth body about without, without, without. Yeah, that's all it is. I appreciate the fact that y'all believe I'm better than y'all and y'all want to be like me, even though I don't even want to be like myself. <laughs> y'all are under strong delusion. When we hate ourselves, we are really hating God for what he made us to be. And the fact that we feel his intent cannot be attained. So a person that hates themselves really hates God for making them the way they are. Hmm. I, I told you last, don't you listen to these demons that are telling you something is wrong with you. Because that's what they tell you to make you hate yourself. Something's wrong with you. You have less than. Something's wrong with your upbringing. Something's wrong with your mom. Something's wrong with your dad. Something's wrong with this. And they'll just keep talking and talking. They'll come in the forms of familiar things. Familiar people. To get you down on yourself and make your countenance fall. Because the devil knows once you hate yourself, you'll hate God. Cain is the best example. I told y'all last week. Cain is the best example. God told Cain, man, if you just do good, all will be well. But Cain had a problem that he felt God couldn't even solve. Abel. What am I going to do about Abel? If I do what you say, God, what am I going to do about Abel? And he killed him. Yeah because he hated himself. When we hate ourselves, we are really hating God. That's why he didn't listen to God. If he loved God, he would have done what God told him to do. Yeah. Problem solved. Cain and Abel would have been boys. Yeah, but when self-hatred comes, you start hating other people. Especially people that did the good that you should have done. That's who you're going to hate. Oh, oh, oh! They're gonna hate the preacher because the preacher kept preaching what you should have done. Then, when you didn't do it, John 8 and 44. I know I'm preaching in this house. Ye are of your father. Jesus telling him, You are of your father. The devil and the lust of your father, ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning. And abode not in the truth because there is no truth in him. Some folks are of their father, the devil. Preaching makes them itch. They can't sit still. You're preaching against what I want to do. Well, why do you want to do that? Because of what was done to me. Thank you, Elder. 
Self-hatred comes to distort God's plan and erase his intent for us. It puts us on a path of soul searching. Oh, gosh. And soulish passions that make us attempt to love the creature without the creator. Soulish passions, soul searching. If you go to soul searching on the internet, you're going to end up on the page of a witch. And she's going to teach you how to tap into your third eye and use your chakras and heal yourself and heal your body and all is going to be well. Burn some sage and I mean get into yourself and start just take away all the negative voices and use the sage to get rid of all the negative spirits and the negative energy. They're going to tell you all of that stuff and their lives are miserable. Ain't no happy witch. Don't you let that woman fool you. She is not happy. You don't conjure the devil and get happy. The devil's never happy. He's always angry. John Ramirez said that's what woke him up one day. He was like, why am I working for the devil? The devil got mad at him and blinded him for three years. When he was the devil's right hand man in the church of Satan, or the, not the church of Satan, but he was, you know, a devil worshiper. And he became friends with Satan and was working for him. And he got mad at him and blinded him for three years. So after the three years, he started thinking, you know what? <laughs> I think I need to work for somebody else. I mean, because this dude is angry all the time. They show you pictures and images of the devil laughing and smiling. The devil's never laughing. Why would he laugh? What does he have to be happy about? You ever seen somebody on death row joking around? Hey, man, it's uh, Yeah, Doc. Yeah, man. I did. <laughs> Dude, you ain't joking around on no death row. You on death row. The row of death. Ain't nothing funny on the row of death, Marshall. How you on death row laughing? The devil is on death row. He knows his time is short. Why would he be joking and carrying on? <laughs> death row, man. <laughs> but yeah, some old witch, that's what you're going to get when you go soul searching. Oh, no one understands me. They don't understand. They don't really know what happened to me. They just don't get it. They don't understand. The devil said, I understand. And he'll put you on that path. Search. Then you meditate. <laughs> Sitting in the lotus position. Yeah, because that's what yoga, yoga is. Yoga is soul worship to Satan. Is yoga actually demonic? Is it actually something to be concerned about? Or is it a bunch of just paranoia from these religious Christians thinking everything's demonic? Well, let me tell you, two years ago, I was a certified yoga instructor with hundreds of hours of training. And it was my passion. My passion was healing. My passion was helping people heal. And little did I know I was deceived. And not until I was saved by Jesus Christ did I know that, whoa, Yoga is a whole different animal. This isn't just stretching and, and physical exercise. If you truly follow yoga, the spiritual path of yoga, the word yoga is to be yoked with, to be united with. And in the ancient texts of Hinduism, the Vedas, and the Bhagavad Gita, which is like the Hindu Bible, talks about being yoked with the universal consciousness. It's all about merging your soul with the universal consciousness. Now, most people going to yoga studios doing yoga have no idea about this, nor do they have any really desire to do that. They're mostly there for physical exercise, for you know mental health, and and something beneficial to their life to to just stay healthy and stay flexible, which are all great things. But the thing is, you are pursuing that under a greater covering, under a greater mission of yoga, which is completely anti-biblical, completely anti-Christian, and will actually end up in extreme demonization because these gods and goddesses, many of the yoga poses 
are actually used to worship specific gods and goddesses. Poses and sequences to worship the sun, to worship specific gods like Shakti and Shiva and Ganesha and the true the true religion of yoga is much more than just stretching. He didn't know. They didn't tell him that there's a big difference from stretching and doing the crouching dragon. There's a big difference. Because <laughs> I stretch, but I don't do the <laughs> jumping caterpillar. I don't, I, you know all them old names. I don't know what, I don't know what they call them, but he said when you do the, use those names and attach it, you attach the religion of yoga with it. Yoga is a religion. It's not stretching. Yoga's not stretching. Stretching, look at somebody say, stretching is stretching. See, when you stretch, you're stretching. Then when you're done stretching, you're not stretching anymore. You're finished stretching. Stretching ended because you stopped. But when you do yoga, yoga doesn't end because you stop stretching. I know I'm preaching. I feel it. Yeah. Yoga don't end when you stop stretching because yoga is a religion. And it turned your stretch into worship of a pagan deity. But people that do that, they're trying to find themselves because somebody let them down. It puts us on a path of soul searching. Romans 1 and 25, who changed the truth of God into a lie and worshiped and served the creature more than the creator was blessed forever. So these people that are condemned in Romans, they changed the truth of God into a what? A lie. You opened up your church and did yoga with the congregation? You changed the truth of God into a lie. And you worshiped and served the creature more than the creator. Can I keep preaching in here? Mm. I had to use this picture. Somebody sent me this dude. I said, Lord have mercy. Look at that. Looky there. I mean, he ain't shame at all. Now, if I was Alpha Phi Alpha, I'd have a problem. But if you Alpha Phi Alpha, you ain't going to say nothing. Because you Alpha Phi Alpha. You know, sometimes I just have to let the folks know when they start crowding in here, where we stand in here. Amen. Everything you see on here is sin. Freemasonry, yeah. sorority, fraternity, it's sad. Because you worship, you got to worship, you got to pledge to a what? A what? A false what? God that the Bible, that Paul called what? Demons. He called them demons. The Greek gods, demons. Mythology shows you that they're demons. Olympus isn't real. Zeus is not the true God. Apollo is not Christ. It's mythology based on real events where they've taken the place of the true God. Uh, man, it's the end times. I can't be worried about folks. Self-hatred gives rise to the glorification of pagan gods and deities, pledges and oaths to false gods, and worship of entities and self beings So when you hate yourself, you got to prove to people that you're okay. How do you prove to people okay that you're okay? You got to unite with things that make you stand out and look better in the eyes of others. person that's securing themselves and good with what God made, they ain't pledging. Hazing? You mean I got to be humiliated to get in this? 
I'd rather just humble myself and be with God than humiliate myself and shout, Skewie! That ain't worth it, bro. I ain't, I ain't gonna be in a room with him and them shoes. That ain't worth it, bro. That ain't worth it! Do you and them shoes? That we ain't... We ain't gonna be in the room together. Stomping. How you gonna step in them shoes? You stepping in the name of love in them shoes. That ain't no green step. <laughs> in these cases, someone hated themselves and their reality, or their reality. Someone hated either themselves or hated their what? Reality. I don't like my life. I don't like my life. My life isn't turning out the way I want it to turn out because somebody's doing something I don't like. Or somebody did something to me to mess me up. So I don't like my life. They hate themselves or they hate their reality and then they go on a quest for something other than God's creation role yes, for them. First Corinthians 10 and 21. You cannot drink the cup of the Lord and the cup of devils. You can't take an oath and a pledge to a devil and then pledge your life to the Lord. You cannot be partakers of the Lord's table and of the table of devils. Who was he talking to? The Greeks. He was talking to the Greeks. They inadvertently opened themselves up to demons that could conjure up good feelings for them. The devil will make you feel good because people are cheering you on. That's why so many people are depressed now, these artists and different things, because digital energy don't translate. It's not the same as when you have a crowd of people chanting your name. You feel that energy because that energy is approval. Even though you know in secret you're a devil. And you've sold your soul to the devil. And you got to pay him with your soul at the end of all of this. But the crowd can make you forget all of that in that moment. Because they're chanting and cheering you on. And giving you good feelings. So people will exchange their soul for a good feeling. The Bible said Esau did that. Esau sold his birthright because he was hungry and he wanted that good old lentil stew. Now let me tell you something about the lentil stew now. Have y'all ever had it? Now that'll make you now. It'll make you think about the birthright now. Wait a minute. When Sister Anne Marie make it, you be like, man. Oh, but Esau, he traded his whole birthright for a moment to feel good. And that's what they're doing. Selling their soul to the devil for some hand claps from people you don't know. God created you with a creation role in mind. Meaning a purpose. When he made man. First thing he did was, okay, now you have a job. He made man and then gave him a what? A job. He made man and gave him what? A job. Name these animals. Go to work, Adam. That's his creation role. So when men don't work, they got to do something else to feel good about themselves. Lay up under some woman to pay their bills. And then get mad at me for preaching that they need a job. But God made man and gave him a what? A job. Then he made woman. Why did he make woman? What did he, why did he make woman? For the man. Simple and plain. That's the creation role. So anything outside of that, things start getting a little weird. And dysfunctional. And they come in and tell you, oh, no, you don't need a man. Skew! (laughs) 
And if you do get a man, you better be able to boss him around and make him do whatever you say. That's the only kind of man. If they weren't that right there. He got to be less of a man. Because if he's a strong man, he goes against the creed to the false god. I ain't worried about it, y'all. I ain't worried about it. Y'all know how long I'm... Anyway. They took a pathway that is not sanctioned by God for us. This changes who they feel they should be, and they become the image of something else. That's what the devil's trying to do. Make you into the image of something else other than what God created you to do. Romans 1 and 21, because that, when they knew God, they glorified him not as God. Neither were they thankful, but became what? Vain, selfish, self-centered in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was what? Darkened. Heart darkened. They can't even hear God or feel God. When they hear me preaching, they're ready to kill me. Remember, Stephen was just preaching a, a message. And the governors, I mean, he, he was insignificant. He didn't even really hold a position. The dudes with the positions, with the uniforms and the clothes and the pomp and the sitting up on the dais and a little boy out there preaching. But the Bible said when he started talking, they began to gnash their teeth with anger. They picked up stones and killed him because what he was preaching was the truth. And they had all been living a lie. It's crazy, man. I have folks don't even know me, man. Yeah. Driving. I could just be driving my car. I'm going to Salada. <laughs> or Snappy. You know, them, them my joints right there. Snappy salad. I got one in the refrigerator waiting on I could just be driving and a demon will get in somebody and they'll ride by and they'll just look at me and just frown. I'm like, dude, you, what's up? You don't know me? <laughs> Once I roll out the window, Jonathan, no, I start singing to him and everything. <laughs> oh, me and Jonathan, we have a blast in the car, don't we, Jonathan? <laughs> don't you be looking at me like no demon with my son in here? What's up? <laughs> That's the jam right here. It's gonna ruin my day, man. I'm happy. <laughs> but it changes who they feel they should be. And then they became, try to become someone else. Romans 1 and 21 says that. Their foolish hearts become darken. Y'all, it's Freemason time, just in case you didn't know. Everything you see that's happening, is that's the Freemasons. I told y'all way back in part four of the truth behind hip-hop, all this stuff was going to happen. They were laying the foundation. They bought up everything. They own everything. They own everything that brings you pleasure, every time, anything that makes you have fun. They own it all. And now they're united in bringing the world to a screeching halt to destroy humanity. To create human 2.0 and mess up God's creation just like they did in the days of Noah. It's, it's, I, man, we've been talking about this for a long time, haven't we, Sister Amy? I mean, it's so plain. Just go watch the Truth Behind Hip Hop series. Yeah, this has been the plan all along. This is why so many are tattooed, strangely pierced, have wild hair, they falsify their identity and even augment their bodies just to be whatever the spirits are telling them to be. Yeah, so they turn themselves into this, and I know some of y'all got tatted up back when you was in the world, but you're saved now. Amen, keep your shirt on. You're saved now, keep your shirt on. We don't need to see that. <laughs> Amen, hey, hey, you were just out there, but you know you did it because you hated yourself. It's self-hatred, it's self-mutilation. That's why you did it. That's why you wish you had. I think the, the number is like 98% of all people that's ever been tattooed wish they hadn't done it. Yeah. Especially if you did it when you were skinny and now you ain't. And everything you, everything you got put on you doesn't group. Transformers. It just, 
You should have just got an Autobot on you. He turns into a truck. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, that was your younger days. We was all smaller in our younger days. But this is, this is why people get tattooed. They strangely pierce. They, here's what the devil does. Because I grew up in high school, and the people that you knew the devil had been whispering to and talking to, they became gothics. So they would walk around like these, these people. And then the devil would make them look like this to cause more rejection. See, the devil's telling you, change yourself so you look different to make people talk about the way you look to prove that something's wrong with you. You see what I'm saying? It's, it's, it's like he, the devil's messing with your mind. If you didn't dress like this, folks wouldn't say it. But now that you're dressing like this because the devil told you to, folks are talking about you, and now you're like, yeah, see, they're talking about me, so something must be really wrong with me. Bruh, you changed the way you look. Same with tattoos and stuff. I talk to men all the time. You know, a lot of them don't want to come to church because, man, you don't look at, Man, you got to come to church. Come on, man. I mean, a large majority of folks in there have this. Right? Men in here got ear holes and earrings because that was an identity they were mimicking. Because the world told them to do that. God never told you to do that. So when they come in here, we take the earrings out. Men don't rock earrings in here. Because we know where that came from. And we just face the facts. Yeah, I may have the holes, but I don't have to do that no more. My identity is based on me working a job and taking care of my family. That's who God created me to be. He didn't create me to be no pimp, no player, no old job turkey. No, he created me to be a man for my family and my kids. So ain't no need of me walking around looking like the street folks. And the same with the women. I'd see. But the devil want to make you look like this so you'll be ashamed. And then when folks talk about you, the devil can say, see, something's wrong with you. You're different. They are even changing genders. So now the devil is telling you something's wrong with your gender? And you got male body parts? Female body parts and something is wrong with your gender? How could something wrong with, oh, oh, I know. Something's wrong with what God made. God made a mistake. If God made a mistake, he's not the true and living God. That's all this gender bending is about. People that change their gender are saying God failed. And if he's not the true and living God, he can't help me. Attempting to change genders and attempting to fall in love with the same gender. You can't. You can't. You ain't in love. At night, you're going to have to drink something. You have to smoke something. You got to put your mind into a mental state so that you can accept the existence you're trying to live. Because you're trying to live against your own creation existence. The way God made you. You're trying to quiet your body and make your body believe a lie. Body won't accept it. Romans 1 and 24. Wherefore God also gave them up to uncleanness through the lust of their what? Own, own hearts. To dishonor their own bodies between themselves. I want you to mess your body up so you'll feel bad about it when folk talk about you. So the devil can say they talking about you and something must be wrong with you. When you mess yourself up. You chose that. Agape love does not come naturally. You're not God. Agape love is God's unconditional love. That don't come naturally. You got to practice that. If it came natural, Jesus wouldn't have came and taught it. He came and taught it for us to learn it so we could apply it because it don't come natural. Man! All of these modifications represent self-hatred and abuse of one's body. Listen, y'all. Oh, y'all better hear me. 
It was a spirit that entered in to you just into you just to change who God made you to be. Just like Eve in the garden, you were tempted to find a better you instead of loving the you that pleases God. How could Eve and Adam please God any more than what he created them to be? He created them in a way that pleased him to the point to where he said, it is good. Like, you're done. Like, this is it. This is all you have to do is be this. Just be the man, Adam. Be his wife. Just be this, and you're good. Nothing else has to be done. He said, you're good. Oh, but no, I'm not good like that. I got to have more. Got to have more. What are women going to think if all I care about is just taking care of my kids? What are men going to think if I just, they're going to think I'm whipped if all I care about is my family and I got to have more. Got to have more. Got to modify. These are the folks that's believing the New World Order because that's what the New World Order is all about, modifications. Instead of loving the you that pleases God. How, does, how do I please God? By being me. I preach the gospel because God called me to. But that's not what makes me me. Because when all y'all leave, it's just me. So I got to do this and be with my children and my family and love them because that ain't going nowhere. That's, that's what I'm created for. All the other stuff, good. Yeah, I help folks all oh, thing. Oh, yeah, folks all over the world being helped, good. That's not my creation role. If that would be the case, then when God made Adam, he'd have made a congregation. <laughs> Bring the word, Adam. <laughs> In the beginning, y'all, this message is going to be very short. It's only got like two days worth of information. But in the beginning, <laughs> amen. <laughs> no, no. He made him, put him in a garden, gave him a wife. Yeah, the gospel and the preaching didn't come to folks messed up. Genesis 3 and 6, and when the woman saw that the tree was good for food and that it was pleasant to the eyes and a tree to be desired to make one wise. Why do you need to be wise? Who you going to show it to, the snake? Look at this snake. I can solve a Rubik's Cube now. I mean, what? Who are you showing it to? The devil came and made you think that there was more when more wasn't necessary. Now you spend your life striving and unhappy and ah, nah, 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 nobody likes you. Because you're not happy just being you. I love being around people that just like being themselves. They're good with themselves. What I have and what I'm doing don't affect how they are. I want to be around you because... Everything I do, you, know, you got a comment. No. She didn't even have to do this. Eve was fine. Adam was fine. God is love, and in order to truly have love for yourself, you must have the source of agape, unconditional love from God. 1 John 4 and 8, he that loveth not knoweth not who? God. God. For God is what? Love. love. New Age theology teaches us to be lovers of ourselves. Lovers of what we do 
instead of who God created us to be. In New Age philosophy, a person is defined by their accomplishments, what they have, the car, the house, the clothes. They're concerned about what people are saying because they hate themselves. If you're good with yourself, you don't care what folks think. Amen. If you're good with yourself. Only a person that's not good with themselves. Well, life did me wrong, my life. Uh, life did us all wrong. <laughs> Man, life is not the pop popomatic bubble game. Life is for real. And we've all had to overcome stuff, but we still got to make good decisions. Amen? Don't you get mad at me because I made a better decision than you. You had the opportunity to make the same decision. Lovers of what we do instead of who God created us to be. In New Age philosophy, a person is defined by their accomplishments, their thoughts and actions, and their gifting and abilities. They even consider these powers given by the God so they can be special among regular people. That's what they're saying now. Yeah, powers. Enlightened folks. You, there's something on you, man. You're, you're, you, there's the energy flowing through you. You have this and you have that. And, ah! Stupid! You don't have God, you don't have anything. Amen? And if you have God, you'll love your brothers and sisters. If you have God, you'll be obedient to your parents. If you have God, you'll do the things that God commands. Second Timothy 3. For men shall be lovers of their own selves. And then it describes what a lover of themselves is. A covetous person is a lover of their own self. That's a person that just wants everything. No matter what it costs, they'll bust their whole house up, leave their husband or wife, mess the whole family up to go get what they want because somebody else had it. It's covetous. Boasters. Getting stuff just to boast. Proud. Blasphemous. Disobedient to parents. That's a lover of his own self. You're not doing what your parents says? Unthankful, unholy, gay and lesbian without natural affection. Because that we know that's not a natural affection. Your body is telling you that. Something's wrong with that. Truce breakers. Keep breaking the peace. You get good with somebody. Man, are we good? We good, man. I forgive you. You forgive me. We good. Next thing you know. Hey, man, you're a truth breaker. But a person like that, it'll never be good with them because they're not good with themselves. You can't be good with anyone if you're not good with yourself. So you're truth breakers. False accuser, just making up stuff to make somebody look bad to make you look better. You stupid. Incontinent, just out of control. You just out of control. You know, incontinent, you know, when it comes to your bladder, y'all know what that is. Right? <laughs> Don't make me laugh. <laughs> I'm incontinence. Well, your whole life is like that. You can't hold nothing. <laughs> Just <laughs> let me go to the next word. <laughs> Fierce. <laughs> I'm back into something. Fierce. <laughs> Despisers of <laughs> Despisers of those that are good. Just hate good. They're over there doing good. They're over there doing good. They're praying. They're fasting. At ABC. <laughs> I'm mad. Are you mad? Because they're doing good. <laughs> Traitors. Y'all know. Backstabbers. Heady, high minded, and the worst one. Lovers of pleasure more than the lovers of God. I'm almost done. In our current society, love is measured by likes and views of friends and comments. That's even worse. People would destroy their own loved ones and those they really admire just to get views and likes to equate to the love they feel they do not get in reality. A person that is filled with self-hatred will always harm others for the sake of advancement and popularity. Titus 3 and 2, speak evil of no man. Look at somebody and say, speak evil, speak evil. of no man. 
Don't go on the internet and speak evil of a man. You just don't do that. Can you pick up the phone and call them like old times? You can't call them because most of the time you really don't have a problem with them. You just want some attention. You want some attention because you're not happy with yourself. You hate yourself and you need some attention. And the internet doesn't discriminate. It'll let you be as dumb as you want to be. And you think you smart. But the Bible says show meekness unto all men. Our true existence can only be given by our manufacturer. Does that make sense? The manufacturer knows what you should be doing. So your existence can only be given by him. He made you. The devil didn't make you. We can't change the intent for the creation without upsetting the creator. This is why these ideologies are demonic and abominable to God. Luke 16 and 15, and he said unto them, Ye are they which justify yourselves before men. Just care too much about what people are thinking. But God knoweth your heart. For that which is highly esteemed, the things that men care about are an abomination. So you worried about things that are abominable to God. But God knows your heart. Amen? Amen. Summary! This was a good message, huh? Somebody still thinking about that pie huh? and that coffee combination. I made it sound good. We are to love who God made us to be and not what society feels we should be. Did y'all hear that? The problem with becoming a lover of oneself is that you will do what pleases you no matter how it harms others. This is the opposite of God's love. His love is all about doing what? Laying down your life for others. If it will harm others, you consider others before yourself. Jesus did this for us on the cross. He laid down his life for us and expects us to what? Do the same. But when you become a lover of self, you will follow the course of the world to become who the world feels you should be instead of who God created you. This is why there is so much sickness in our world today. Mental illness issues are growing exponentially because people are living against God's creation plan. Depression, anxiety, insomnia, nervousness, obesity, suicidal thoughts, etc. plague people that attempt to live against God's plan for them. Your body will not allow you to get away with it. When you adopt the self-love of a pagan society, you adopt the spirit of this world, and it will war against the spirit of God and destroy your body. When you try to find yourself, become one with yourself, seek for knowledge of self, or use Eastern myth mystical methods of loving yourself, yoga, meditation, chanting, etc. You are inviting the plan of the devil into your life instead of God's plan. The devil's plan will kill you, but God's plan will give you abundant life. Man, I don't need to just feel better right now. I need to solve this problem. So I don't have to keep feeling bad about it. I don't want to have to keep burning sage every time I start. <laughs> I need to <laughs> fix this problem and put that sage and dressing where it belongs. <laughs> we must not allow hatred into our hearts. It will always cause us to seek after the wrong things. Y'all hear me? We, it will always cause us to seek after the wrong things. Embrace the wrong philosophies and be influenced by the wrong people. Hatred of self and others is a sin that leads to death. Repent for hating yourself and whoever hurt you or made you jealous. made you jealous. All of this is because you was jealous. Repent for hating yourself. Whoever hurt you or made you jealous. Be delivered and your life will change. You will then be able to truly love your what? Neighbor, Neighbor as your 
self. Everyone stand to your feet. Galatians 5 and 14. For the law is fulfilled in one word, even in this. The whole law. And I know there are Sabbath keepers and folks that try to keep the law, whatever. You can't. It's impossible to keep the law. That's why Jesus came to die to fulfill the whole law. And he fulfilled the whole law in one word. This one saying, thou shalt what? Love thy neighbor as thyself. The problem with this is, though, I mean, this, this solves the whole law. This pays everything. But the problem with this is the thyself part. Because the devil has made so many of us hate ourselves. So we can't love our neighbor. We can't love other people. We can't even love our husband and wife the right way. We can't even love our own children the right way. We can't love right because we hate ourselves. But God is dealing with that in this church and abroad, whoever's watching the video. But God is dealing with that. God wants that. He wants to fix that self-hatred. So if that's a battle that you're still battling with or you've been battling with or it's been happening in your life or the enemy's been speaking in your ears, whatever the case, telling you to hate yourself, change yourself, all of these different things, if you've been hearing that or whatever, I want to pray for you. I want you to just come. Come on. Wherever you are, just come on. We just fill this area up. And it's easy, you know, because, I mean, look, look what happened. Look what happened to you. Look what happened to, you know, your life. Look what the enemy did, whatever the case. I need this man. This message has changed my life. And I kid you not. I kid you not. These messages are the truth. And you better appreciate what God is doing in your midst. God is healing lifelong issues. I mean lifelong struggles lifelong addictions, lifelong problems, things that have kept you feeling less than, unworthy, worthless, making you grab hold to things that don't even make sense. And ignoring the love that is around you, not even being thankful for what God has done and giving you, not being grateful for all that he's given you. Don't let the devil do that. Anyone else? So everyone just bow your heads. Father God, we thank you, Lord, for this message. And Father God, we thank you first off for just loving us enough to tell us the truth. The truth about ourselves the things that we may be ashamed of, the things that we may not want anyone to know, the things that we run from, that we hide, all of those things, God. We thank you, Lord, for just giving us the truth today. And we thank you, Lord, because we know that you said we would know the truth and it would be the truth that would make us free. So we ask for that freedom right now, freedom from self-hatred right now. Freedom, God, from feeling down on ourselves, from our countenance being fallen. Father God, for just all the mistakes, all of the bad, the, the, the good, the bad, the ugly, everything that has happened in our lives, God. Remove the self-hatred and the guilt and the shame, God. Silence the voices that have been speaking in our ears to make us do something wrong, corrupt, make us hurt someone. Make us maliciously attack someone. Make us hold someone else at fault for what we did. Father God, just silence those voices right now. No matter how they're coming, no matter whose face is on them, no matter whose voice it is, no matter who's saying it, whatever face the enemy's putting on it, God, we come against it right now. And we silence every negative voice. No weapon that is formed against us will prosper. And you will cast down every negative word that is spoken. 
So we cast those voices down. It doesn't matter how we grew up. It doesn't matter what our parents did. It doesn't matter what our father did, our mother did. It doesn't matter, Father God, even if we grew up in foster care, Father God, even if we grew up without parents, even if we were given up as a child, adopted, whatever the case, silence the voices that are telling us that something is wrong with us. When God, you used one of the greatest men in the Bible who was abandoned by his parents and put in a basket and floated into a pagan society and you took that same man and delivered your people, millions of your people from the hand of Pharaoh through that man and your own son came down without a place to stay, staying in a stable, being born in a manger with animals. So God, silence every voice that tries to make us feel that we are inadequate. Make us feel something is wrong. Make us feel we are unworthy. Make us feel we are different and can't be like everyone else. Father God, we silence those voices right now. God, your plan for us will be instituted in our lives. We will walk out your plan. We will live your plan. We will live our creation role. Father God, we will continue. Father God, in what we know to be the truth. Because it's the truth that makes us free. And God, give us contentment. Give contentment where, Father God, there is discontentment. Where there is covetousness. Where someone is seeking to be something. Someone is looking to be better. Wherever it is, Father God, give them contentment right now. And help us, Father God, to be satisfied with who you've made us. That we will know that what you made is good. And we'll give your name the praise, the glory, and the honor, God. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, hug somebody. Look at them and say, I love myself the way God loves me. And I love you too. I love you too. Hallelujah. 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 You may be seated. Thank you, Lord. Y'all enjoy that message? How many of you needed that? Amen. Come on, Elder.